This no bypass brewer designed with the help of an astrophysicist can do percolation, immersion, and pretty much anything in between. And today I'll be brewing three different recipes using the same coffee to get drastically different cups. I'll let that steep for a bit. Okay, if that intro didn't make it obvious enough, I am very excited about this brewer and it's been a while since a dripper has made me feel this way. Yes, coffee is the other woman in my life. This is the Pulsar by Next Level Brewing Company who are known for the Level 10 brewer. The Pulsar is the latest addition to their lineup and was developed in collaboration with Jonathan Gagne, who, if you haven't heard of, is a legit scientist, an astrophysicist to be more precise, and also happens to be properly obsessed with coffee. So if he calls this his dream brewer, then consider my interest peaked. Before we get started, this unit was sent to us by Next Level, no strings attached, no money exchange hands, and they honestly had no idea we were even making this video. And as always, thank you to Banky Brewing Tools for helping with all the logistics. Cool, so diving straight into aesthetics, I think this brewer looks really cool, especially the black version with the tinted walls. I'm not sure if the name, the packaging, and the fact that Jonathan was involved is messing with my head, but it really looks like a cute spaceship or headless rocket to me. It's so different to anything else on the market, even the Tricolet, to be honest. And speaking of the Tricolet, this kind of has it beat on all counts, but I'll talk about that a little later on. The Pulsa has a lot going on visually. You have different materials, these funky projections on the flared base, a shower screen with an interesting hole pattern on a wavy surface, branding on both sides and a valve, but they all somehow come together in a cohesive way to create a unique and rather interesting looking object. If I had to be nitpicky, the only thing that could use a little more refinement in terms of design would be this tap that opens and closes the valve. While it's perfectly functional, it just lacks the refinement that the rest of the product has. Even just rounding out these corners and maybe increasing the thickness ever so slightly will make it gel a lot better in my opinion. So yeah, I think it's a really cool looking product, but I'd be curious to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments. But now, let's move on to build quality. The Pulsa is made with EcoZen and food safe TPE. EcoZen is a competitor to the more popular Triton found on brewers like the Tricolet and Aeropress Clear. It's a BPA free clear co-polyester that's used on all the transparent parts like the walls and shower screen, which all look nice and feel really sturdy. TPE or thermoplastic elastomer is basically a plastic rubber hybrid or copolymer that has the properties of both parent materials and a bunch of advantages over rubber that I won't get into right now. It's an interesting material choice that feels really nice to handle and honestly works quite well. My only concern is longevity. Would this start to harden or lose elasticity over time being assembled and disassembled and exposed to higher temperatures? This could compromise the seal around the walls and the valve. It's too early to tell, but as long as they've used high quality TP, I don't see this being an issue anytime soon. The other concern is odor retention. Now, silicone is notorious for this, and I'm hoping that the TP does a little better. It does have this rubbery smell straight out of the box that hasn't quite gone away just yet, even after several brews, but luckily it doesn't affect the cup, so it's not really such a big deal. I do wonder how it'll handle coffee oil buildup over time. I think a soak in hot water with baking soda and vinegar every once in a while should do the trick but I'm yet to get to a point where I need to do this. I just give it a good rinse right after brewing and I think that's good practice anyway. Okay, I forgot to mention this. These filters seem super high quality and they're very fast and I'm pretty sure you can use them more than once. So overall, I'm really happy with the build quality, but what is it like to actually use this thing? Well, let's talk user experience and then brew some tasty coffee using three completely different recipes. I'm super excited to share that with all of you. Okay, so the Pulsa is surprisingly easy to use. The carefully designed shower screen takes care of the water delivery onto the bed for the most part, and the valve gives you control over the steep and release. So honestly, it's really easy to get started brewing good cups of coffee. I really like this about it. It lowers the barrier to entry and allows even someone who's new to brewing to quickly get up and running. But then you start to play with the different variables that this thing gives you control over, and it'll put a smile on even the nerdiest of coffee nerds. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with this, percolation is when extraction happens as fresh brew water passes through a bed of coffee, and immersion is when extraction happens as the coffee and water sit together in a container. For example, the V60 would be percolation and the French press immersion. So the interesting thing with coffee is that different flavor compounds extract at different rates. So with percolation brews, it tends to highlight compounds that extract faster, as the water only has a very short period of contact time as it passes through the bed. With immersion, on the other hand, there's a lot more time, so 
a lot more of the flavor compounds present in the coffee are represented more evenly. This is why the two styles of brewing produce very different results in the cup and both have their pros and cons. The addition of the valve means that the pulsa can do either of these styles or a combo of both. It may not be obvious at first, but this valve isn't like what you see on the Hario switch or the Clever, where it's either on or off. This here has a variable aperture, meaning you have full control over the output flow, and this is huge. It means you don't have to rely solely on grind size to control your brew time. For example, you can go really coarse and still brew slow to open up a whole other flavor profile. But I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll talk about this in depth in the next segment. So let's get back to UX. Firstly, I love that the filter paper is secured in place by the walls, meaning there's no chance of it lifting or shifting out of place. This was one of my issues with the tricklet. Also, the internal rib design of the base and the deep set outlet hole means that you have excellent airflow and no worries of the filter drooping and blocking the hole. The walls form a perfect seal with the base, but look on the top and you'll see these semicircular cutouts, which once again ensure good airflow at all times. You can see this in action when you brew cause I've gotten some crazy fast brews with no signs of channeling and easily hit extractions north of 20%. There are subtle design details on the shower screen too. Look closely and you'll notice that the inner circle has slightly smaller holes. My guess is that because this cluster of holes are very close together, having them be the same size as the other holes would result in a larger volume of water being delivered to just the center of the bed. So this small tweak helps prevent that. It also sports this wavy surface, which again, I would assume aids in the way that water flows to the holes. So yeah, clearly a lot of thought and care has gone into designing this product, but few things are as perfect as James Hoffman's hair. So there are a couple of minor annoyances. First up is stability. The fact that it's quite tall and the way that the base is designed makes it a bit awkward to seat properly on a carafe or a cup. It always feels a tad unstable, kind of like me trying to hold a basic yoga pose. And the valve is stiff, making things even more precarious. Also, you're brewing with a fairly large and shallow bed of coffee, so it's quite important for the brewer to be upright, not tilted off to one side. Not all tabletops are perfectly parallel to the ground, so ensuring a level brewer is definitely a bit frustrating. Maybe it should have a small built-in spirit level indicator like tripods do. I know, that sounded a bit ridiculous even in my head, but I decided to say it out loud anyway. I mean, I would use it, and I think Jonathan would too. But anyway, moving on. The only other gripe I have is the workflow. It's definitely a bit of a faff with the process of assembly and disassembly before and after every brew. The walls are press fitted onto the base and it takes a bit of wiggling to get it free. This is not such a big issue pre-brewing, but post-brewing cleanup always requires some extra concentration and careful controlled wiggling to disassemble without coffee grounds flying everywhere. But given what this thing delivers in the cup, I'm pretty happy to put up with these quirks. So let's brew some coffee so I can show you just how versatile the pulsa is. Okay, before we get into the actual recipes, here's how we'll be prepping before every brew. First up, here's a pro tip that I got from Jonathan himself. In order to eliminate any air pockets that can mess up the flow and cause channeling, close the valve, fill the base with a couple of centimeters of water, place the filter in so it floats, then open the valve, drain the water and watch as the filter sits immaculately. Once the water is drained, shut the valve. This does add a couple extra steps, but it looks so satisfying and is good for your brews, so just do it. One more quick pro tip, the valve seems to work better and require less precise adjustment at the 12 o'clock open and three o'clock close positions, as opposed to six o'clock and nine o'clock. Okay, next place the base on a flat surface and push the walls down firmly onto the base to ensure that it's seated properly and forms a perfect seal. Then place the shower screen on top. Pour boiling hot water onto the shower screen Give it a few swirls and let it sit while you weigh and grind your beans. This will preheat the entire brewer and the shower screen and help rinse the paper. Once you're ready to brew, open the valve, discard the water, add the grounds to the brew chamber and give it a couple of quick shakes or use a WDT to level it more carefully. I prefer the latter because like most married dudes who also have kids and run a startup, I have a lot of free time on my hands. Then place the shower screen back on and you're ready to brew. Oh. One last pro tip. You can turn the shower screen ever so slightly between pores to prevent the drops from falling in the exact same place and potentially digging a hole in the bed. I haven't found this to be necessary for most recipes, but there are times it could come handy. 
Okay, one last step. I promise I'll stop after this. But you may notice in this footage that there are jets of water shooting through random holes at different times. Now, this is when the kettle stream sort of perfectly aligns with a particular hole on the shower screen. And this is slow motion, so it's very momentary. But it is a reminder to not keep the kettle in the same place and to always keep it in constant motion to prevent one of these streams from digging a hole in the coffee bed and causing channeling. Okay, now on to the recipes themselves. First up, we have Jonathan Garnier's recipe. And considering he's designed the thing, I think it's a great place to start. For this recipe, we'll be using 20 grams of coffee and 340 grams of water to get to a 1 is to 17 ratio. The grind size will be around 800 microns, which is a tad coarser than a regular pour over. I'm brewing a light roast, so I'll be using water just off boil because the shower screen sucks up quite a bit of heat and the drops that fall through have a larger surface area and lose more heat on their way to the coffee bed than a stream of water does coming out of a kettle. Okay, let's brew. Close the valve and quickly pour in 3x your dose, so 60 grams in this case. Then open the valve ever so slightly until the first few drops fall, then close it back up. This again is to eliminate air pockets. Then lift it using the base, not the walls, and gently swirl three to five times to level the bed. Place it back down and wait until the timer hits one minute. Alternatively, you could also use the WDT tool to gently stir the slurry and get all the grounds wet. Now open the valve and pour until the slurry is a few centimeters above the bed. Then let it drain till it's about a centimeter above the bed. Then do the next pour. Repeat this until you reach your target weight of 340 grams. The key here is to keep the slurry level low, but not let it drain through fully as this seems to help minimize astringency while also achieving higher extractions by keeping the brew temperature higher. Aim for a total brew time somewhere between 3 minutes 30 and 4 minutes 30 seconds. This is an excellent recipe that yields a really sweet and balanced cup that pulls out the deeper notes in the coffee with little to no astringency. And here are some modifications you can make to this recipe to either change the flavor profile a little bit or troubleshoot. If the drawdown is too quick, you can either grind finer or slow the brew down by partially closing the valve. They result in different cup profiles, so choose based on the coffee and your palate. You can also shorten the bloom from a minute down to 45 seconds or even 30 seconds to shift the balance of the cup to be more acidic and vibrant at the expense of a little sweetness. This moves the profile more towards, say, an Aurea brew with some characteristics of a V60. You start to get more subtle, delicate notes, but an overall more tea-like brew. Very enjoyable with some coffees. And lastly, in addition to shortening the bloom, also open the valve up right after the swirl to emulate what you do with a regular pour over brewer like the V60 or the Aurea. This tends to highlight acidity even more. Cool, so next up we have a recipe that I've crudely named multi-steep and release. Here, we're using 18 grams of coffee and 300 grams of water, so just shy of one is to 17 ratio. So with the previous recipe, it's mostly percolation except for the steep bloom, which is immersion. The idea here is to introduce more immersion by steeping after every pour. Prep the brewer again and dose 18 grams of coffee ground to around 800 microns. Close the valve and as with the previous recipe, bloom with around 60 grams of water. Open the valve briefly and close after the first few drops. Gently swirl three to five times. At 45 seconds, open the valve and let the water drain through. At one minute, close the valve and pour 120 grams of water. Gently swirl one to two times to level the bed, then open the valve. When the water has drained to about a centimeter above the bed, Close the valve again and pour the last 120 grams. Gently swirl and then open the valve to complete the brew. Here too, you can try some of these mods to tailor the brew to your palate. Firstly, you can go coarser or finer depending on how your brews turn out. Next, you can increase steep time post pour and not open it straight away to see how that affects the cup. And lastly, you can play with the output flow. Okay, so the last recipe I very creatively christened French no press. And as the name suggests, is a full immersion style brew using 18 grams of coffee and 306 grams of water. But we're grinding quite a bit finer here, around 400 microns, as this method has less agitation, so we need the finer grind to get a good extraction. Temperature again depends on the roast level. All right, and for the last time, prep the brewer, but don't dose the coffee just yet. Close the valve and add 306 grams of water just off boil, then add the coffee in. Give it a few gentle prods or use a WDT tool to get all of the grounds wet and then give it three to five proper front to back stirs with something like a cupping spoon to agitate. At around two minutes, you may need to use a WDT to just knock down any crust that's formed. Then let it sit for four to six minutes. Once that's done, give it a gentle swirl or two to level the bed 
open the valve and enjoy a super clean full immersion brew. To dial in this recipe, you can one, tweak the grind size, two, increase and decrease the number of stirs, or lastly, you can add the coffee first and do a direct pour without the shower screen onto the grounds to create more agitation. You do run the risk of stalling, but with medium and dark roast, this can really help increase the texture and mouthfeel. And now that we're done brewing, onto the most fun part, clean up. Like I mentioned earlier, just be careful when pulling the walls off. One neat trick is to keep the valve closed when pulling the walls off so that the vacuum kind of keeps the paper and sort of keeps the grounds in place. Then open up the valve, give it a few taps and all of the grounds and filter should fall out. Give everything a good rinse and you're good to go again. So going from the first recipe, especially if you use the shorter or open valve bloom to the last recipe, you go from a vibrant acid forward cup with more subtlety and nuance and slightly lighter body to a heavier, more intense texture forward cup. It is so cool that all of these brews have come out of the same brewer and I have barely scratched the surface of the permutations and combinations of variables that you can experiment with. You can also open up a whole other can of worms if you play with direct pours or use something like a mellow drip instead of the stock shower screen. We've made a super detailed video on how important pouring is and how it can impact your cup. So definitely check that out. It's linked up here and in the description below. But hopefully these examples have demonstrated the sheer versatility of the pulsar and will help you decide if it's for you or not. So what does the Pulsar cost and who is it for? Well, at the time of filming this review, it's listed at 65 US dollars and considering the design complexities, build quality and performance, I think this is a very fair price. As for who it's for, if you're someone who enjoys filter coffee and the ritual of brewing, and you're looking for a single brewer that can take the same coffee and extract it in various different ways, then you will not be disappointed. But if you don't want to overcomplicate things like I often enjoy doing, you can just keep it simple and still get great coffee out of this thing. It is a large flat bottom brewer, so it won't be replacing my trusty V60 because physics, but the sheer versatility and quality of the brews that it's capable of means that it's definitely going to be seeing a lot of action at the Aramse household. Much like the grinder space, the dripper market is also very saturated. So to be able to create a product that isn't just a variation of something that already exists, but is actually its own thing is very commendable. Also, it isn't cheap to bring a new product to market. So it's really cool that Next Level were open to this sort of a collaboration. But now I'd love to hear from you. What are your thoughts on the Pulsar? Do you own it? And have you come up with any cool recipes of your own? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and steep and release Aramsi.